that it was never designed to do. And that is a, a, a single page website. The fact that Google Web Designer exists in the first place is uh, put up to banner ads. And banner ads are uh, the scourge of the internet. But nonetheless, it's a simple way of, of arcing together what is a, a bunch of absolutely positioned objects, animating them, and giving them some, uh, some life. Uh, but I'm repurposing Google Web Designer to uh, provide uh, at least the framework for building uh, dynamic single-page websites. Um, so you can create a new file in Google Web Designer, and you can define it as a HTML file, and it will build what ostensibly is um, a complete website from HTML to slash HTML. So uh, you can drop objects onto the uh, canvas, and, and the canvas is, is as I said, uh, uh, the body of, of a web page. Um, but what you see here is the, um, is the beginnings of a set of objects or a set of elements that are, are placed um, in a position absolute, and, and that is relative to the top left-hand corner of the screen. So top and left are zero and zero, and everything that you see being typed in here um, is in relation to that top left calculation. Um, so the object is to create what, what are four web pages uh, in a single web page, and that uh, we have a set of events that um, will listen for changes or clicks, uh, and then make some changes to the document as a result. So what we've got here is a, a title, h1, a byline, h3, and some body text, all laid out uh, in, on a more or less a sort of a thousand pixels by 600 or 700 pixels. When uh, it's rendered to the screen, those pixels uh, are, are going to essentially be in the top left-hand corner. Now what I'm doing here is I'm going to create two menus. Create one menu for mobile view and another menu for desktop view. The mobile view menu will be a, uh, a hamburger style menu and that is when you click on the M, uh, up comes four submenu items. And I'm just styling them right now, giving them a, um, a H3 structure, uh, changing the size of the element it, which is also absolutely positioned, giving that a, a background. And I think I might want to make it the same background as that uh, maroon color for the um, the header across the top. Um, so now I have a menu uh, for mobile, and the next is to so create a set of distributed uh, alternative menus. So when we're using Google Web Designer uh, on the initial um, development, we're creating objects for both desktop and mobile view. Um, and there's a set of media queries that we can set uh, under the responsive uh, tab of Google Web Designer. So I'll define those four menu items, um, each one having uh, its own uh, space distributed across horizontally. Um, and given some padding so that when a user clicks on one of those menus, a, um, a border appears below it to, to designate that the user physically clicked on one of those menu items. So I need to add a bit of padding. Once I'm happy with that, I'll um, duplicate those uh, four menus out, select all four of them, and then choose the distribute horizontally feature, which makes sure that the space between each one of those menus is, is uh, even. Um, and uh, you, can, you can see each menu is, is given the same name, and I'll resolve that later. But at this moment in time, I've created a new media rule, and I'm going to define the point at which mobile and desktop are uh, sliced. Um, and what I'm physically going to do is, is on the desktop view, I'm going to hide the hamburger menu with uh, a visibility attribute, which is in the properties panel. So I change the visibility of um, the hamburger. I change the visibility of the, um, of the dropdown as well, just, just to make sure that uh, in mobile view, and desktop view, we have two separate experiences or two separate user experiences. I also need to make sure that um, the headline and the byline and the body text also um, take up uh, a different 
uh, set of proportions. So in mobile view, they're obviously going to take a much uh, more compressed view than, than they are in desktop. And you can preview and test and make sure that both the uh, both menus will appear in exclusivity of each other. So that is only one menu appears at any one time. Um, so having done that, um, I'm changing the visibility of that drop down menu also because its initial state should be hidden whether we're in desktop or mobile. It's only when we click on the M or uh, a whole hamburger menu, I'm a bit lazy in not putting images in, um, that that, that submenu should appear. What I'm doing now is I'm going to give each one of the things that are going to have events attached to them IDs. So essentially all of the visual elements are going to have exclusive IDs allocated to them. So I'm going to have a menu 1 to 4 for the desktop mode and a menu 1 to 4 for the, uh, the mobile view as well. And make sure that each is given a separate ID so that they don't... Um, they don't get in the way of each other. The mobile menu or the M button there is a toggle and it's going to either switch on or switch off the mobile sub menu. So all four menu items will appear when I click on the M. So visually speaking, what I can do is I can just set style changes when I click on certain things. So when I click on the M, I'm going to change the visibility of the um, the sub menu. I just got to check the ID there and copy that to clipboard, um, and make sure that that menu sub is is the one that I'm using. So change the visibility to visible, uh, and uh, when I test that, it's only going to work one way, and that is it's only going to display. It won't undisplay. It won't remove itself. So essentially I'm going to have five events, that is one for the mobile menu to toggle it on and off, and four for each one of the menu items. Now what I'm doing here is I'm registering those events uh, using the, the GUI, uh, which in turn changes the code in the back. Uh, and we will go to code view uh, very shortly, but in the first instance, we'll just get um, the events registered, uh, and then we'll modify those events uh, uh, in code to do more than just change the uh, met, uh, uh, the border bottom property that I'm putting on each one of the menu items. Solid three picks yellow. So every time I click on something, and, and when I go to preview, <laughs> a menu goes on, but menu does not come off, okay? And underline appears and never disappears. So I have a bit of a problem. I need to resolve that, and the only way I'm going to do that is going to code. So you can see one, two, three, four events have been registered. Um, uh, five events. So there's a menu click, a main click event, uh, a menu one to menu four click event. Now, here I'm adding an if statement. So that if statement's going to ask a question about the style characteristics of the menu. Because if the menu is already visible, so the, uh, the mobile sub menu is already visible, then it should be hidden. But if it's hidden, then it should be visible. So it's technically a toggle. So I'm writing an if statement to deal with the, the toggle characteristics of, of that, that particular menu item. Um, so mobile sub, mobile sub. So uh, essentially, I've, I've added um, code to, to, to switch on and off. Now, what I'm going to do here um, is whenever a user clicks on a menu, um, it's got to change um, the border to zero um, for every other menu except the menu that was clicked. So those three extra lines that I've added um, essentially ensure that at any one time there can only be one menu showing uh, with a little underline. And it's a, it's a visual cue to an end user to say which menu are we on or which page are we using. Uh, in relation to the four that we have available to us. Can't be done in CSS by itself, so that's why JavaScript can come to the rescue sometimes and resolve some of those. So uh, it's, it ends up being four lines of code for each one of these functions, um, three lines to turn off um, 
some of the menu items and one line to turn on the menu items. So hopefully, given that I've added what, what essentially is uh, maybe 15 extra lines of code to what Google Web Designer created in the first place, these now become custom events. Um, you see the menus work, but I've completely broken the M. Uh, and, and what can be handy sometimes is actually going into the console and just checking to see whether there's any errors. That's the worst of all situations is when um, there are no errors appearing, but it still doesn't work. So we have to end up looking through each line of code confirming what we're doing. And really, in, in the end, the event has to apply to uh, the M, uh, but it's the sub that gets changed. So I'm just going through and double checking to make sure that um, each one of our um, our pieces of JavaScript were correctly. Um, and menu goes on and off. So uh, we essentially have um, our five events doing what they need to do. However, um, the four desktop menus do not change the content and we'll start by changing the content itself um, so you can see the heading and the byline and the body text they all need to be different depending on which menu the user has chosen so we can essentially go in again and add more lines to each one of those four events that have been created and it's these four events that I will use in the mobile view as well um, the mobile view doesn't need to change the style of the actual menu items themselves, but they will have to change the heading text, um, the heading byline, and the heading content. So I'm, I'm going through and I'm, I'm writing pure JavaScript to actually physically change those values um, so that uh, uh, the heading and the byline and the body can all have different content depending on what's been, uh, what's been dealt with. Um, of course, I, I'm using the wrong IDs, um, and we can pull some of the text that's already predefined in the HTML document, uh, end our quotes, but I haven't actually set the, uh, the um, oh, I'm double checking, I'm double checking the actual IDs, I've, I've used the wrong IDs, so I'll need to rewrite that title byline and in this type body text so each one of those three ids are useful and will be copied out and dealt with slightly differently for each one of the menu items that are used um, and those three extra lines have been added to to again each one and and i will then need to change to what the menu looks like uh, and what the body text looks like, just just to give each page a different um, a different user experience or or a different uh, piece of content. The mobile menu is going to need a a, a different uh, a different piece of uh, a piece of um, or set of functions, but I, I'm attempting to debug this and and the carriage returns that have been placed. Um, inside the single quotes have caused us some difficulty. So what we need to do is to bring all of those new line carriage returns out of our, um, of our JavaScript and, and have every one of our pieces of text on one line, which is both perfectly feasible in JavaScript. Um, it can be done without too much difficulty. Uh, it just has to be removed so that, again, the code highlighting represents um, uh, things that have been placed in quotes as opposed to things that uh, are, are being passed by the, the interpreter incorrectly. So I'm bringing everything up uh, onto one line, and you can see all the red text gives uh, me certainty that um, the JavaScript interpreter will not be looking at things uh, that are in quotes. So now when I click on different pieces of content, you can see menu one to four content and the byline are changing. The body text is the same. Uh, I've been a bit lazy. What I've now forgotten to do is to sort of add different uh, events to each one of the mobile versions of, of the menu system. So I might go ahead and do that now, uh, which involves um, going and editing the HTML. And you'll, you'll see 
a bit of a faux pas on the part of Google Web Designer using what could be considered very bad HTML form, and that's the BR or the break lines. Um, so the Google Web Designers uh, allowed um, the uh, the the uh, polluting of view related uh, items inside uh, HTML that should that should be CSS but look I'm I'm just as guilty for for putting content in JavaScript which in itself is also a faux pas um, doing that inner HTML could couldn't be considered a um, particularly good practice but what I'm doing here is I'm gonna um, put each one of the menu items in a paragraph tag uh, which is far more acceptable from a, um, a, uh, a HTML uh, perspective. Um, but each one of those will or should have an event attached to them. So an on-click event is going to um, alert the, um, the JavaScript interpreter to fire a function. And you can see here that what uh, Google Web Design has done is is decided to create anonymous functions and assign them to what could be co considered variables. Um, the problem I have, I think, is is that um, I, I may have to create what what are separate functions um, that don't touch the desktop menu system, but nonetheless still use the content uh, swapping feature. Um, and you can see here that uh, I'm failing miserably in just allocating that anonymous function. So and no errors appearing in the JavaScript console, which is, of course, any developer's worst nightmare. It's far nicer to actually have um, errors that one can debug ahead of um, no errors whatsoever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename these functions, take the GWD out, um, renamed four brand new functions and then copy the four existing functions that Google Web Designer instantiated and make them useful for the mobile view. So um, still nothing, of course, but what I'm getting now is, a, is an error proving that uh, the four functions don't exist and I need to include them. So I'm going to take holus bolus, the four existing functions, copy them out, make some new space, paste them in, and change the the function names. So I'll take the GWD out and get rid of the anonymous function references, and then copy that, uh, well, remove those four extra lines that are desktop related, but copy out the function name, change the number. Yeah, so it's robotic now. We're, we're just going ahead and changing values, getting rid of the desktop version changing values, getting rid of the desktop version. And now we have our four separate functions that do just the content swapping or the content changing. Um, and I'm changing the visibility of the mobile menu to hidden. So when a user clicks on one of those um, pop-out menus, uh, the menu system disappears completely, which is standard um, standard operation for uh, the way the, these things work. And that is a uh, uh, single-page website solution done in uh, Google Web Designer. 